now that you know which specimen you're going to work on and the micro abrasive that you're going to use, I'm going to start talking about the different parts of your workstation, the air compressor, the air filter, the blaster itself, the containment case or the workstation with the glass cover, the dust collector as well. All these parts make up what I like to call the little workstation here. And all parts are essential to the operation of the blaster. And I'm going to go through and talk about each one now. Probably the most important part to the blaster operation is the air compressor itself. Because the blaster is pneumatic, it has to have air pressure to power the abrasive. In addition to the air compressor, you have to have an air filter. Now, the air filter will filter out any of the air compressor's oil or water vapor that's in the air that is getting pushed through the airline. The filter will filter this out so that only dry, clean air will be blasted into the blaster itself. Now, that's important because the microabrasive is very prone to clumping when it gets wet or even a little bit of water vapor gets mixed in. And clumping will clog the machine. You want to avoid that. That's why you don't reuse any of the microabrasive that's already been used and you don't use any that's been setting out exposed to the air. Okay, located here behind the blaster on the floor is the air compressor itself. This is the big gray cylinder behind it. The air hoses coming off of the air compressor which lead into the air filter and from the air filter up to the blaster itself. Now the air compressor, this red switch, you just flip it down to turn it on. But before you can turn it on, there is a drain valve underneath. Now this valve is almost identical to this one on the filter. You have to screw it out, all the way out, to close it. And when you turn on the air compressor, if there's any leaking out of this, make sure you twist it tight to stop the leaking. This will make your air pressure go down and it will make the compressor work harder. When you're finished working, you want to open these again by screwing them back in and that will open this up and let water drain out of the filter and the air compressor. Again, you don't want any water left in this or the air compressor that might get through the filter. The filter also has a pressure regulator which is just left screwed all the way down. This lets the maximum pressure of air go through. And a gauge here and a cutoff valve as well. Now, I just leave the valve open and the regulator all the way down to the highest point and use the regulator on the blaster itself when I want to change the pressure. The dust collector is also important for the operation of the blaster because without it your workstation will be filled up with the abrasive and you wouldn't be able to see what you're working on. There is a flexible hose that is connected to the back of the chamber. This goes into the dust collector in the back. Now, the dust collector has a large 220 volt uh, motor on the inside of it, which basically creates a giant vacuum. When you turn it on and you stick your hands in through these holes in the workstation, it, you can really feel how powerful this motor is. Now, basically, like I said, it's a giant vacuum cleaner. Now, I've removed the front panel here so you can see the inside, and it's basically just a bunch of vacuum bags. Periodically, after use, every month or so, this needs to be dusted out. You can see here there's a tray, the collection tray at the bottom. To, to clean the bags, they're not replaceable, you just have to dust them off. There's a foot pedal. By pressing the foot pedal, it shakes the bags out. Probably not a good idea to do it with the panel off because of the dust that comes off. Leave the panel on, press the foot pedal, let the dust settle, and then remove the collection tray and dump it out. That's all you have to do to clean the duster. First you want to close the water drain valves on both the air compressor and the air filter. These are located behind the blaster workstation up on the floor. Now, you want to screw the valves out until they stop. This will close them. 
they'll become tight. You won't be able to screw them out any longer. And you put the compressor back down. And there's a red switch right on top. Just flip it on, and it'll power up for about 10 minutes. And when it shuts off, you'll be ready to work. Compressor's really loud, so you'll want to use ear protection. This protects your ears from any false time effect. Once the air compressor stops, you're ready to start working. The next thing you want to do is go ahead and pour in your abrasive. Do not power on the blaster until you pour in the abrasive and close the pressure tank. Failing to do this will send a dust cloud throughout the entire room. You don't want to do that. Now, my specimen is pretty hard rock. I'm going to choose 25 micron aluminum oxide. Now, the microns, smaller the micron, the slower the cutting speed. The larger the micron, the faster the cutting speed. If you're working with a specimen you haven't worked with before, or a type of stone you haven't worked with before, try this, a different uh, piece of rock that you ha don't really care about just to get the, the feel for it. You'll have to test it out. It's a trial and error. To pour in the bracelet, all you do is remove the tank's cover and pour it in. I usually only fill the the pressure tank about halfway. Only use it one tank at a time. This tank doesn't really pressurize very well, so this tank is mainly the one I use. Filling it up about halfway will give you about 30 to 45 minutes of cutting time. I just replace the cover by screwing it back on. Make sure it's good and tight. Turn on the blaster. As you'll see, the pressure gauge goes up. Should be at about 120, 115 psi. That's about the max that the, the air compressor will go. You can increase the speed of the pressure or decrease the pressure. You, I just keep it as high as it'll go. The next thing you want to do is turn on the dust collector. The light for the, the case down here. The switch for that is behind. See it comes on. Turning on the dust collector, and then we can start working. <laughs>